Hey guys, what's up? Mike here. Thanks for tuning in to another video. Happy Friday to you. Let's talk wireframes. Uh, somebody might wanted me to touch on wireframes and I don't really talk too much about wireframes because it's not a huge part of my um, everyday workflow today. Um, and I tweeted about this. I tweeted about, I uh, tweeted on the fact that I think digital wireframes are somewhat overrated or you don't really need them anymore. You can go directly from whiteboarding, sketching into high fidelity. And this garnered a lot of um, activity, you know, different folks had different opinions about this. And I, I wanted to touch on this because wireframing is a huge part of the UX design process. Any article you read, any book you read, I even preached on it, I, uh, you know, I have it in my UX design process. Um, so, and, and a part of it, because I, as I grew into learning UX design, I thought this was, this was vital, you know? And so I talk about wireframes, like, you know, wireframes are, are pretty much easy to, to do, right? You can do wireframes in, in PowerPoint, in any design app, you just build boxes and whatnot. And basically the idea behind the wireframe is a wireframe is a low fidelity, it's a low end design just to kind of uh, save time. It's, it's something to give you an idea of the flow um, of the application, the site, or where, whatever it is you're trying to you trying to build, right? And you can do that in a lot of different ways. But in the industry of UX design, product design, you see blog articles, and you'll see a lot of digital, really high fancy, high fidelity designs and high or, or wireframes. Um, and, and you don't really know, and you see sketching, like really high fidelity sketching. You'll see those like like a typical designer photo of like, you know, have a really cool pencil and a really cool desk and, and it has these like these really high fidelity um, wireframes with, with, with pencil sketching, right? <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm getting to the point to where in my everyday workflow, I'm starting to weed out this even, this idea of even teaching it to a, a high extent because in many aspects, it's not really needed, okay? High fidelity digital, wireframes or, or just digital wireframes are really not needed per se and they're not that effective. Let me explain. Many times when you're, instead of going high fidelity digital wireframes, what you want to do is you want to go kick off, right? Gather all the requirements and identify your use cases, right? And your, your, your um, use cases and user stories, right? And you can do that either on a whiteboard um, or on a piece of paper and basically on your whiteboard if you are sketching out some some user some use cases These are low fidelity like boxes and arrows and stuff like that You don't need to get too 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 fancy, right? And so you can take a snapshot of that whiteboard or if you need to to hash out your use cases You can hash them out on a piece of paper, right? Just in a bullet point format, right? and now and why I say go from there to high fidelity because the tools today allow you to do that so much quicker. Um, back in the day, people didn't want to, I, I think people didn't really want to hassle with, with Photoshop because you got to deal with layers and coming up with the concepts of the design takes too long. But today, many times when you work for a tech company, you're not recreating your VDL, your visual design language, which is the fancy term for your look and feel. You're not recreating your look and feel every day, every week, right? Once a VDL, your your visual design language is, is set, that's pretty much going to be in place over the next three years, okay? You look at Google, right? Um, you look at Facebook, Netflix, uh, Amazon, uh, Uber, any, any Snapchat, any tech company today has a UI design kit, a visual design language that's already in place. And this allows you to go directly from low fidelity, hashing out, brainstorming on a whiteboard or a piece of paper, very low fidelity. I'm talking about chicken scratch to the point to where it doesn't take too much time for this, right? Anything that, that, that requires you to stay within a little line, that's too much, right? So when you see these high fancy, you know, pencil sketches and like even like high fidelity digital wireframes, those aren't needed anymore in my opinion. So you go from there and now you go directly from your, with these these VDLs that are already created for you, these kits that are already created for you in the companies we have one at ADP as well. 
you know, I can drag and drop elements onto a page. And so basically I'm doing my wireframing work in a high fidelity situation. <clears throat> and so I, that's how I always work. Um, and, and so, it was, and, and in, in addition to that, let me go a little further, okay? First off, it, it speeds up the process, right? That's how I work. These tools allow me to design it really quickly. But you would say why, you know, you don't want, when you're doing user testing and you're building out a new application or whatnot, you don't want the user to focus on the visuals. You want them to focus on the flow. I've been through hundreds, I think probably over a hundred usability studies. I presented to VPs probably over 50 times, like really like top level VPs. You notice when you, every time um, you present, and I've been in situations where we presented low fidelity mockups to users and, and have them like do sorting and whatnot. And most of the time it's, it's too, it's too low of a, of a concept for them, right? Many times they're looking at this, like, why does it look like this? Or is this how it looks? And you know, the VP, especially they're like, when can we meet with the, with the, with the real, with the real designs, right? And, and so nine times out of 10, these clients and users are focusing on the fact that this design doesn't look pretty. When in fact, the purpose was them for you to have them not even focus on the designs. You can even preface the conversation with, let's not focus on the designs. We're just trying to get, get a, get an idea of the flow. The flow is right. But the, the VP stakeholders, the, the, the top stakeholders are always like, when can we meet? You know, the, the clients and the VPs are already 10 steps ahead of what you're trying to accomplish with, with wireframes. They want to see the visual design work. Why? Because now they can get context and they can, their subconscious can relax instead of them looking at this, this gray box and trying to figure out what this gray box is in a high fidelity visual design, they see what it's intended to do. And now they're actually focused on your presentation and the actual flow of the application. All right. So a lot of this is, this is a challenge because a lot of UX researchers, they like to, they're, they're, they're a huge part of the process is wireframing and, and things like that. So un unless you have a disconnect in your organization from UX researchers, and product designers, you know, UX researchers might go off and, and do, or, or, you know, do the, the, the high fidelity, or I would say digital wireframes and then pass them on to a visual designer. But in my case, when you get in, grow into like product design, where you're doing your hands-on with UX and UI, you can save your company a lot of time and speed up the process. Look like a star. If you just Kind of bypass those things and work quickly and agile and, and lean in a high fidelity mock-up situation so i'm going to start i know i've taught wireframes in the past and but i'm going to take that out of my process and only use it when um when it's necessary like if you're just now building this brand new application right from scratch which is, is rarely the case um, you might do some high, you might do some digital wireframes, right? Just to kind of hash out everything and then go into the visual design. But normally, normally when you land a job today, okay, I'm, I would say 95% of the time there, you're, you're coming into some situation where the product is already there for you. And so you want to look at the situation where in not all cases you have to, in the process of UX design, UI design, you don't have to wireframe in every single case. You can, many times you can go from kickoff, understanding the requirements, understanding the needs, uh, whiteboard session, low fidelity, understanding of the use cases and user stories, whatever you do. If you sketch that out, like bullet and bullet points on a whiteboard or whatever, take a picture of that. Now go into your high fidelity, but always be aware that hey you know and be able to work lean right if you can move quickly in your application i can move quickly in sketch right you have these components and things that are already pre-built for you these symbols and whatnot you can move fast i recommend going into that route going high fidelity route having your stakeholder meetings with high fidelity you know and, and situations where um you might be that much further along into getting this into production saving your company a lot of time and a lot of wasted effort into um, 
managing these 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 digital um, wireframes. Anyway, thanks for uh, watching. If this was helpful, gave you something to think about, let me know your comments below and let me know your process and, and where wireframes fits in. And uh, if you like the thing I talk about, please hit the thumbs up button. As always, visit my website, mlwebco.com if you want to ask me any questions. Until next video, guys, we'll talk soon, all right? Peace.